What is up course heroes welcome to yet another video this is your boy Amit and today we are going to look at Answerly on AppSumo it is a chatbot tool powered by AI powered by ChatGPT but what I am interested to see is how you can use this chatbot as a personal chatbot where you can train it with your own systems with your own knowledge base and feed that data to it and have that be the base layer for answering questions when someone asks a question to this chatbot. Let's get started and look into Answerly. I'm on their AppSumo deal page for Answerly and the deal starts at $49 right now. The reviews are coming in. It's not looking good, but I'm hoping that gets turned around. I was able to test it a bit and today I'm going to walk you through that testing, before we get into it, quick overview on the deal page. For that $49, you get one chatbot, one knowledge hub, one seed, and one connected domain. And we're going to go through what all of this means. The real meat, I think, is in this agency deal or the tier four where you get higher numbers. Other than that, most of these tiers, according to me, are very low priced or I shouldn't say low price, they, there's just not enough being given to us LTD addicts. That's my personal opinion. And as for the founder of Answerly, Patos, he also has a couple of other deals on AppSumo. So Pop-Up Hero is by the same founder and so is Facepop. And you can check those out. Those two have really good reviews. I'm not sure how big is the team and how the founder is managing these three products. Now, Let's dive into the back end. I signed up for their free trial and when you log in, this is what you're going to see as your dashboard. If you click this little blue button at the bottom, it opens up your settings. And then on your dashboard here, you have a few things you can do. You can create a chatbot. You can look into conversations, which is past interactions that the chatbot has had with your visitors. And then the heartbeat of all of this is the knowledge hub where the AI training happens. On the right side, you have redeem your AppSumo code, account settings, and then contact support. Under account settings, you can go in and that's going to essentially bring you to the same place we were earlier. You can update your profile. You can check your API keys. All of that fun stuff can be done here. I'm going to go start with the chatbot to show you how to create your first chatbot. Now, I already have one. It's uh, for my virtual non-existent company called Virtutech. And you can see right here, the chatbot is giving me some prompts. I can actually interact with the chatbot right here as I am building it out. So I can ask it questions here. And what it's going to do is it's going to reference the knowledge base that has been added to the Knowledge Hub source and grab that details from there. I have not connected this chatbot to my knowledge base yet. That's why you're not seeing a reply. We're going to do that in a few minutes. The next step here is the AI identity. For this AI identity, you can give it uh, your business name and the name of the AI assistant. The name is what matters because that's what's going to show up here. So I've given it the name of the company and then you can uh, pick different humor settings or personality settings because I'm on the free version. The only one I get is humorous. And then you, if you are on the pro version, you also get the custom prompt. Moving on is your greeting editor. So these three messages that you see here, those are the greetings. I can actually delete one of them and just leave the first two or delete first and the third one and just leave this one right here. You can see all the changes happen in real time. I can hit apply and that will be the default greeting for anyone interacting with the bot. If you wanted to add that back, you can just click add message and apply your changes. Knowledge Hub source, this is where you're going to connect your knowledge base to the chatbot. And this is where the interlinking, the magic happens. Without this, your chatbot is nothing other than a wrapper around chat GPD. So right now, if I ask it a question, it is going to reference chat GPT and not my internal knowledge base. And we're going to fix that in a few minutes. Further down here, you have your contact support form. So your visitors can contact support. You can reprogram this email address and put in a success message. And then the look and feel of the 
chatbot right now all of this is not available to me because i am not on the pro version if you get the app sumo deal you will be able to choose the placement of the website uh, where exactly you want to place the widget how much the height should be or the width rather and then any margins and then also your placeholder text right now the placeholder text simply says enter your message moving down you can also pick your custom colors for your chatbot to match your brand colors and your different fonts to match your branding fonts. Further down here, we have custom code. So you can in inject custom code into the bot. I'm not too sure about the use case for this one. And then other, you can turn off the answer lead branding. You can enable SDK so your developers can build on top of this. And then Z index is the floating index. And then you also have your chatbot ID. Further down, once you have your chatbot built, you can give this link to someone and they can interact with your chatbot. So if I was to open this, you can see the chatbot opens up. This is just a plain UI. It's not embedded on your site or you can get the QR code and that QR code will allow you to also interact with the chatbot. You can also do an iframe embed. This is likely what most of us are going to do is copy this code, paste it on your website, get that chatbot showing up on your website. And then webhooks is if you are sending this data using Pabli or Zapier, you can use webhooks. So let's get into the Knowledge Hub. Before we move on any further, a little public service announcement. If you enjoyed this video, support me, use my link that's in the description and also subscribe to the channel. Let's go to the next one, which is our Knowledge Hub. So Knowledge Hub is the brains and the heart of this chatbot. This is where you're going to feed the knowledge hub, your data from your company or whatever data you want to feed it. And that's the data this chatbot is going to reference first before it goes and references OpenAI. First thing you're going to do is give your knowledge hub a name and then get your OpenAI API key and put that in here. Then you can edit your knowledge base. Right now I have my Virtual Tech Knowledge Base and also the OpenAI API key in here. And also you can go and see your workspace. On the left side here, this is where you're going to probably spend most of your time when you first start out, which is creating the content. You can also import content from websites, from knowledge bases. And all of this is locked right for me. But if you are on the AppSumo plan, you'll be able to import all this stuff. Let's go back to our AppSumo plan and see what you can do. You can have 10 crawled web pages per import. So that's included. And then you can also import data here, as you can see, from knowledge bases, from your Google Docs or PDFs. So that seems like it's included in the plan. And then finally, Discover is something super cool. Discover allows you to press this button, run Discover more, where the AI will go and analyze all the questions that you have fed it or all the data that you have fed it and surface questions that the AI thinks you still haven't answered. And then you can go in and answer those questions. And then finally, these four is where your content is going to live. I already have some summaries created. Let me show you how to go ahead and create a summary. So what I want to feed answerly is my company information and the new company information I want to feed it is who is part of our C-suite executives. So I'm going to put that in here as a title and also as a summary content and also give it a tag. Now, looking at the demo videos on Answerly's YouTube channel, Fatos has mentioned that the title and the tag is not relevant. It's mainly the summary content that's relevant. However, what I have noticed is if I don't put in a tag, I cannot create the summary. So it's, I wasn't really sure if the tags are not that relevant, why do I need to create one? So that's something just to keep in mind that whenever you create something, you have to have a tag in here. So I'm going to go ahead and create this summary and activate it. And the last summary I'm going to create is my company's core values. So I'm going to give this title, put in my core values and give it a tag and create it. Now, emergency is something, let's say your company is not going to be available for support for 24 hours or there is a planned maintenance coming up and you wanna let users, if they ask that question in the chatbot, 
that yes, there is a planned maintenance. So I've put in my title, I've put in the message of my emergency. And then when I click in this tag area, I'm not seeing my regular tag that I had when I was under the summary tab. That's because this is a completely new set of database. So you need to create a tag for this specific database. I'm going to call it maintenance and let's create this emergency. We've created the summary. We've created an emergency. This is probably one of the best features when it works. And this is where you can surface media to your visitors. And I can see this being really powerful. If you have a lot of step-by-step -step guides, someone comes in and asks, how do I do X, Y, Z? You just show them a screenshot and they are on their merry way versus going to a blog post, going to a knowledge article, searching through screenshots. This makes life really easy. So for now, I'm just going to upload the logo for this company. So I've uploaded my logo, given my logo a description and also provided a tag and I can go ahead and create vision. Now link reference, what's interesting is this lets you send links within the chat bot based on the type of question the user is asking. So in this example, this I'm saying that this is the link to the answerly lifetime deal on AppSumo. So anyone who interacts with this bot asks the question will be able to get this answer. And that answer will be the exact link that takes you right to the deal. So we have created our link, our emergency, our vision, and also our summary. One thing I want to show you here under summary is if we go and click on my summaries, you will see these are all the summaries I have created. And there is a couple of them that are currently grayed out. So I, that means that they are not active and the bot will not be able to reference them. If you want to make them active, you can just hit the little pencil and go ahead and check this box to activate your summary. And let's do that with this one as well. And all my summaries are active. I have my business name, my business type, working hours, etc., etc. The last thing we need to do here is go to our chatbot, go to the Knowledge Hub source and connect this Knowledge Hub to our chatbot and hit apply. The chatbot is ready for action. I found out that once you, all right, we are back. I've connected the knowledge base to the chatbot. Now what we can do is go and ask some of those questions right here to our chatbot. So the first question that I had asked last time that I did not get a good reply on was the year founded. And if we go to our conversations, you can see uh, this was the question, what year were you founded? And the chatbot did not have that knowledge. Now, if we go back to our chatbot, I can go and ask that same question. And this time, hopefully I get the correct answer. Here we go. Virtue Tech Solutions was founded in 2020. Let's give it a few more questions and see if we get the right answers. The next question I want to ask it is who are the members of your C-suite committed? Again, this data has been fed to answer late. So the bot should not have any problems answering those questions. Here we go. Let me cross-reference that to the data that I had given it. So if we cross-reference this to the data that I did give it, you can see that this is indeed correct. We have our CEO, CO, CFO, and CTO. All the names match the data set that I was given. All right, let's continue to challenge our bot and ask it a few more questions. The next one I want to ask it is, what are your company's working hours? And again, it should continue to reference the data that we have fed it. Boom, here we go. And let's see how it handled the image file that we had fed it, which was the logo. Awesome. Love this. It was able to provide the logo. Not only what is it able to provide the logo, it also is adding its own flair to it. It's adding extra bells and whistles that I haven't programmed to the bot. Let's go on to the next one. And next one, I want to ask something that's not in the database. So let's go ahead and ask, what is our earnings per share? I did not feed this information to the bot, so I should not get a response. And here we go. There was no response. Awesome. Let's ask for the share price. So far, it's handling all these queries really well. The next thing I want to try is the planned downtime that we had put under emergency and we can ask that question. Now in this case, I don't want to ask the question verbatim. I want to keep it a little loose because people can tend to ask the same question in many different ways. 
So this time, it doesn't understand what I mean by going offline. So let me ask that same question again. So I had used the word planned downtime. This time, the AI should be able to pick up on this and looks like it isn't able to pick up. So now we can be a little bit more specific. There we go. Now we were able to get the result that we're looking for. So what this tells me is if you are feeding the data, think of all the different ways your customers can ask that question and feed your chatbot the answers that many different ways. What I think will come in handy here is if we go to our Knowledge Hub training and use the discover feature, that discover feature should be able to surface some questions that we might not have thought of. So the one last thing I want to ask it is that lifetime deal link. Let's check that out. Now I did not say is there a lifetime deal available for Answerly because I, I'm assuming that's what the bot that I'm interacting with is for. Again, it didn't understand that. So let's rephrase our question. This time I've asked uh, the lifetime deal link for Answerly. Still no response. So let's rephrase that question again. And this time I'm being a little more specific and I should be able to get the correct response from this AI bot. So still no link. This tells me I need to go and check what exactly I had put in for the link. So this was my question for the link. And I am going to try to put this exact question into the chatbot and see if we can get that link to be fed to us. So you can see that it is hit or miss at this point. It is refusing to give me the link that I have fed it, even when I give it the exact same parameters that are part of my question. Overall, I think it's a great tool. If we can tighten the guardrails or have control on those guardrails so it doesn't go on tangents, so it doesn't start hallucinating. And there you have it, Course Heroes. That's my review of Answerly. Overall, I would give it a 3.5-ish out of 5. I love what Fatos is trying to do with the product. I think we would love to get control of those guardrails so we can tighten them and not have the AI go on its own delusions. I think that would be great. Other than that, I think it's a fantastic tool. It is going to continue to evolve. I hope so. And I'll definitely be investing in the tool myself because I can see the potential of having this knowledge base driven by AI, fed by our answers and putting its own flair on top of our answers. So overall, great tool. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. And until next time, keep creating.